We are about to go into a university hospital where I am going to masturbate. Yep, I'm here to have an orgasm and donate it to science. Husband and wife team Johannes Fuss and Sarah Biedemann studied the chemical changes in our brains when we come. When you climax, you will just blow the whistle. Oh, yay! Before I get down to business, I need to give a blood sample. Once I climax, Sarah and Johannes will take the second sample to see what's changed in my blood. Now we processed your blood and we found that it produced endocannabinoids. Endocannabinoids are potent chemicals. They are important to reduce anxiety, to increase euphoria, and to have pleasurable sex. Your body is producing its own cannabis-like substance. Wow. And it makes you kind of high after masturbation. Makes sense. Dr. Marika De Vitter is an expert on sexual arousal. And I've signed up to her sex lab to dig deeper into what turns us on by watching porn. All in the name of science, mind you. I'm sorry, this is what? And it goes where? While Marika's monitor records how aroused my genitals are, I rate my subjective arousal. First, two guys shagging each other. <sighs> like I can feel my breath shortening or whatever crap. Then, lesbian sex. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Straight sex. He's not very good at this. <laughs> There's men masturbating. I'm less horny than I thought I was. <laughs> Women masturbating. That just seems uncomfortable. You're gonna say something different, aren't you, vagina? And then a surprise little bonus clip of some hairy monkey sex. Okay, this is properly weird now. What did we learn? What did you see? your response actually matched with what we saw in previous research, that the genital arousal response of women is rather non-specific. It kind of shows that for women, it's sexual activity that matters. Your subjective sexual arousal clearly differed depending on the type of porn you were watching. Mm. And what we saw in your pattern, it seems that, especially the lesbian porn in specific, really turned you on in terms of subjective arousal. Does it match your sexual orientation? Sure. Do, you, do you feel more attracted to women? And so generally, I think women are my preferred mm -hmm. gender, mm -hmm. I suppose. Mm -hmm. How you feel, the, 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 the mental component, we see that in women it's a bit more specific. That what really turns you on is kind of a little bit more tied to what you also prefer. So men actually only respond to stimuli that match their sexual orientation. When they don't like it, they don't get an erection, so then nothing is possible anymore. Marika's experiment may show why women appear more sexually fluid than men. We are in Santa Barbara. I'm about to meet a scientist who is going to show me what love looks like in my brain. The woman with this terrifying power, Bianca Acevedo. She can tell you if you're in love just by studying your brain. The idea is that the MRI will scan my brain while I look at photos of different people from across my life. Bianca shows me someone I've had a rather complicated relationship with. So, you ready to see your brain response to your ex? Sure. So this is Jesus the, the response to your ex. So you're showing activity in both the right and the left ventral tegmental area that we see in people that are in love. Right. The ventral tegmental area lights up in response to rewards. So in response to face image of your ex, you still find it rewarding. Mm -hmm. Life is complicated. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Dr. Carlotta Batres studies faces. She explores the relationship between those we find attractive and the culture we grew up in. So, I've signed up to take one of her tests. Eee, should I be scared? Carlotta takes computer-generated faces, manipulates certain features, then asks people to rate them. So who do you find more attractive? I would tend to usually go for the more masculine man. You'd think most people, like me, would go for a more masculine face, but the results were surprising. So 65% of the participants in our sample chose the more feminine face as more attractive. But these were participants in the US. 
Carlotta's study involved both male and female participants, and the results differed depending on what country they were from. If I would have run the study in my home country of El Salvador, I would have found that the majority of participants find the more masculine face yeah. attractive. So there's this link between masculine and health. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a country with higher health risks, yeah. then there's a stronger preference for the more masculine, healthier face. Carl Lott has discovered that what we find hot is shaped by our surroundings, and not just in terms of looking for a healthy mate. One huge influence on what we find beautiful is familiarity. The more different faces that we're exposed to, the more different and varied what we find attractive is. Right, so one of the um, positive things that is happening right now in a lot of ad campaigns is just seeing a greater diversity of people. And that is going to influence and start normalizing more of a range of attractiveness.